I know what you're thinking, uh, not another dim bulb current limiter video, um, but what I'm trying to do with these videos is, is convey the fact that I'm on a journey when it comes to vintage electronics. I, I'm, I don't have all the knowledge, I don't have all the equipment, my background's in microelectronics and coding, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm in a learning process here and I'm, I'm just making these videos really to show you some of the things that I, I get up to during that knowledge increase. Um, so why would I need to build such a device? Well, there's a golden rule really when it comes to vintage electronics. When you first receive it, uh, you don't turn that device on. You, you go inside, you have a look, you examine it, and you check the fundamental components which tend to go short. That's the old electrolytic capacitors, the paper capacitors. At least inspect those or, or routinely change those uh, before you turn that device on. But even when you turn that device on, you want some system or mechanism in place to um, protect that device and protect the mains in the house, uh, really, and that's what current limiters do. Uh, when you think about these, uh, turning on such a device, you might think, oh, I'll use a Variac. Um, and, and often these current limiters are called the poor man's Variac. Um, actually, they're completely unrelated, but they're, and they're very complementary, actually. A, a current limiter with a Variac is a very uh, potent um potent system together. Now I don't have a Variac. Well, I, actually I've got four coming in the post um, which need some um, overhaul work. So that'll be a subject of another uh, video further down the line. But coming back to the current limiter, I, I made a choice that actually is probably more useful to me than the Variac at this particular point in time. If you use the Variac and, and, and turn a device on slowly with that, you still got to look at that device. You still got to monitor the voltages, the currents, and I've even known people monitor the temperature of components when they're turning that variac on. At least with a current limiter, if there's a problem with that particular device, it's going to proactively um, drop the voltage into that device and, and so protect it and protect the mains down down the line. The dim lamp current limiter is basically an incandescent bulb circuit. It must be an incandescent bulb. If we turn the device under test on and it is not faulty, there will be a surge of current into the device until such time it reaches its normal working voltage. The lamp will briefly light until the operating voltage is reached. It will then extinguish or be very dimly lit. If the device under test has a short circuit, you can think of the device as a piece of wire in this lamp circuit. All the voltage will continue to be dropped across the lamp and so the current will be limited by the lamp. The device will be protected and will have a visual indication of a problem as the light will be on. I had most of the parts to hand so I just needed to order a few pieces. So now on to designing an enclosure for the uh, dim lamp tester. I've chosen to 3D print this. Uh, normally I don't like to print these large cases uh, but I do need to get this tester working quite quickly. I've got a lot of things down the line I need to use it with. I think in time I will transfer this into a wooden case, I just haven't got the time to do that at the moment. So I'm on to Tinkercad now to develop the case. I love using Tinkercad, although it looks very basic and very easy to use, you can actually build some very sophisticated models and it's ideal for this task. And the finished parts. So um, incandescent bulbs. This dim lamp current limiter requires an incandescent bulb these make fantastic thermal resistors when they're lit i'm sure you can de design a, a more sophisticated device using modern components thermistors etc but it kind of defeats the object of this also you can change the power of the bulb uh, quite easily because they're all obviously in sockets um, and, and that's the other point really uh, you do need to have a high wattage bulb um, the higher the wattage, the lower the filament resistance, uh, and that's quite important, really, because uh, if you have a too low a wattage, then the resistance is high, and that may continue to drop voltage when the device is in normal operation. The, the lamp will be lit or partially lit, uh, and it may affect the input voltage of the device under test, so you do need to make those measurements. That's why I encourage you to watch lots of these videos because people have different opinions as to what is the optimal power for, for a bulb. Most people go for 100 or, or higher, 100 watt or higher. Uh, I've got 150 watts, so I'll start with those. Um, and also as well, you know, these have been phased out. 
globally uh, in many countries around the world. But that phase out happened in the UK in 2009. You can get these very easily uh, through various sources. So, um, so that's not an issue. Obviously, the price of these is, is going up, um, but it's, it's not out of the reach of anybody. I, I bought myself four really um and that should see me through uh for, the, for my lifetime really for this particular project i've got a few more in the shed as well and that's the other point as the value of these rise all those bulbs that are stuck in people's sheds or attic kind of appear on ebay so there's going to be millions and millions and millions of these uh, available for the years to come it's safety first when it comes to dealing with mains and so make sure that everything is out of reach to the touch it really didn't take me long to do the wiring just a few minutes but i made sure that everything was connected as it should be and that all the earths were in place just to ensure that the device under test has a pathway to earth if it needs it so i've got my final tester built it's uh, on its base now so uh, everything's sealed away in terms of the mains I just want to do a quick test now. I don't really have any vintage uh, electronics to plug in. Closest I've got is my, my bench power supply, so we'll turn that on. And it's all plugged into the wall, so all I need to do is actually flip the main switch. And you can see this is powered on, so it's getting its normal uh, power. What I can do now is unplug that. And I've got this device here, which definitely has a short circuit uh, in place. So if I use this, uh, I'm not suggesting you try this at home, but um, I've made sure that it's all safe from a mains perspective. Really all that's going to do is make the circuit for the, for the lamp and that should just come on. So that's the situation when we've actually got a short circuit on the device under test. And really from a, a functionality perspective, that's it. Uh, I have tried some lower wattage bulbs. I do have a few. Um, I can't get these, I think with this, the current draw on it is very low, so I can't get it to um, engage the light at all. So um, so we'll see what happens when we put some real kit on there. I've got some, I've got the four Variax coming in and I've got four radios to produce. So this is why I made this device quite quickly, really. Um, there's no extras. If you go and look at some of the videos on the on YouTube, you'll see there's various devices with um, lamps in parallel. There's devices with switches that switch out the lights. Uh, I don't want to do that because these these are a safety mechanism. I didn't, really didn't want to, to have the ability to take them out of the circuit. Um, and, and so that's fundamentally what it is. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, comment as well. I've had some great feedback around the vials testers. I do appreciate all of that. So there will be some more videos coming up and we'll see uh, what's next down the line.